we can open the floor to you so you can raise the hand and um, ask the questions you would like to pose and you didn't have the time to to put on the chat and the panelists should respond so the floor is yours okay I only see uh, Shalma, Vendel Shalma. Yeah, sorry, it took a while for me to find the raise hand button. Maybe other people have the same. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I had one question that I posed already in my uh, presentation, and uh, it's a very general question. So in uh, the statement that Grill is preparing for uh, our, our data. Uh, uh, sharing policy. We also use the term CAPTA next to data. And I was just wondering um, if you have any thoughts of, or if anyone has any thoughts on this term. And if you also use it or think maybe stick to the term data and not make anything more confusing than it might already be. So if anyone has some comments on this, I'm happy to hear it. Although I realize it's a general question. No, it's could you repeat the term because I didn't? It's the term CAPTA, which is, I'm not sure what Ah, it's okay. Going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah, and uh, so so like to maybe, maybe I, I probably missed uh, I and the, what, what was the background motivation for uh, using the new term and what, uh, what's the meaning or is, is there any uh, meaning, yeah, any, yeah. any, uh, you probably well, said it, but but I, I probably missed it. I don't have it at hand now who coined the term, but um, it's a term that can also be found in the uh, ALEA working uh, group uh, papers about uh, data sharing policy. And it should, it's a term that should um, yeah, be better uh, used for um, well, data in the humanities and social sciences, so not necessarily what we think of as data that uh, a, a beta scientist collects, but or gets from his research, but uh, something captured. Captured, uh, yeah. So, yeah, which can be a broad term in itself, but maybe more suitable for the social sciences and humanities. Ami, Ami, would you like to, to add something? Yeah, I would love to. I, I think you're absolutely right that oftentimes uh, social scientists and particularly humanists are are put off by the term data, uh, especially in English, because it it doesn't it doesn't have the same meaning as in as in other languages like in German you have the idea of Wissenschaft rather than like science which is more inclusive and humanities scholars particularly in my experience simply don't see themselves in terms of data that's just that's not what they do and until a researcher oftentimes can more effectively see themselves in the conversation that you're trying to have with them they're not going to take those activities that you really wish they would when it comes to think Thinking about uh, you know preserving the information of their research for uh, citability or replicability or, or future use or, or whatever the, the reasons might be so yes many times in speaking with humanities scholars social sciences scholars I switch my language up I don't talk about data I talk about research information I talk about uh, the resources that they have gathered that they've based their findings on rather than using that term of data which in, in many cases they just find completely off-putting and not part of their identity so thinking about different terms I think is is a good way to get other types of scholars involved in the conversation around around the data work that we do thank you thank you Ami it's it's a good argument may I the sharing culture uh, Peter? Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Yes, I, I, I have, I have yeah, sympathy Peter. for the idea, but I also have reservations. Um, 
what 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 certainly is true that there is an enormous variety of uh, what people understand under under data and whether it becomes clearer or not uh, by introducing another term um i'm not sure that that's exactly what i'm not sure about i mean uh language is a living thing so it, it might happen it's not bad to introduce um, a, a new term but whether it's going to help remains some remains something to be seen then in the future um it is i think good to know that also in all kinds of uh, scientific or scholarly fields um there is already a lot of confusion confusion about what data actually is or where it starts and where it ends. Um, it is of course a well-known problem already to distinguish between data and information and knowledge and you, yeah, you, you, you uh, not to mention wisdom. Um, uh, we have already that, that, that complexity. And um, uh, by, if you would want to introduce or whether you when when you would want to specify let us say different um, types of yeah and now i i even i'm hesitating which term to use data and information um classes um then you should have very 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 clear uh, definitions for them um, and whether people are going to stick to them i i don't know it struck me when i was doing last year uh, uh, um, a small research on the content of data repositories how enormously varied the content actually is that in some cases um, i would call things rather like um, an entry in a database than a data set and what other people call the data set i would call perhaps a, a data file and 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 that kind of distinctions and it's it struck me that there is a lot of or a lack of clear definitions about what we actually mean by those um, chunks of um, of digital stuff. Is there any raised hand? Yes, Amy has raised her uh, hand as well. Please. Amy, okay, the floor is yours. I, don't, I can see. Thank you. Um, and just responding to, to Peter's last comment there, that there is a, a lot of mixed understandings around what exactly those those chunks of digital stuff might be. And of course, adding to that complexity is different disciplines have different understandings of what a meaningful chunk or size or granularity of of information might be to that particular discipline or to a specific use within that discipline. So I agree, definitely there's a challenge both around terminology, what do we call the stuff, as well as granularity, what size is it an operable, useful, particular size for a purpose. And, and these are complex conversations um, that, that we need to, to have, and I think probably have a certain level of, of adaptability around that understanding what's necessary for different uses to enable those, those types of, of reuse that, that we're looking at as well. Thank you. Thank you, Amin. Um, Brian? I noticed one question from Holger Dor Doring, so I think I would like to raise it and address it to the data archive panelists, maybe, or other data archivists who are who are present. And so the question, because there are many, um, I'll just read it. Um, from the data archives perspective, do they have the resources or interest, in parentheses, to check and review the replication material as well for example documentation code and then uh, there's a short part that says the work that simon is doing for pa so i don't know if any um people from the sps would like to respond to that question i would just mention that there is uh, the, the, a variety between uh, service providers so there are small uh, less developed archives with uh, small capacities in people, there are larger archives and also there are differences in their missions. So it, uh, it really depends. I think that, that that is a good question because uh, 
in in some moment if we uh, make a contract with some publisher and do it all for free then then then, then I, I i would say that answer is for sure no uh because of the, yeah i i don't think that anybody has time to yeah really review in detail uh, as we review the other kinds of data as ilza said finished uh, already finished data but there, there can be a, a, a different levels of of uh, these these checks, these checks. Uh, but I would like to hear somebody from uh, more experienced archives and. Uh, um, well, I wouldn't say uh, Ilza Lates and the uh -huh. Swedish National da Data Service. I'm not really sure if we can be considered as much more experienced. But basically, we have a general workflow what we do the, for, for the curation of the data. And it in, involves checking the material, uh, checking the date, doing some particular checks of the data. We check the materials, um, context information, documentation as well. Um, I'm not really sure that this is uh, the extent of, uh, this is the work that Simon's doing. So it would need some more detailed call. I think it would, it, it, there is a need for a dialogue with, um, publishers and journal editors to see what is expected, what does a replication data file and data documentation level should be for replicators to be able to do their job well. Uh, yeah, that would be, because I mean, uh, what we are doing now, we have a general standard what we're doing and basically none of the, none of the researchers have complained and none of the journals that have submitted their uh, articles have complained, so I guess we're doing it kind of well, but we'd like to do it better, of course. Fiona? Yeah, thank you. Um, I really want to um, second what, what Ilza said. Um, I think that a lot of the, the procedures that we have and the workflows that we have and that we carry out when we publish data, um, they're similar to the the replicator's job but i would also say that you know we um i mean we do this for data that we want to archive and that we want to publish but i think you know it we would probably not not have the resources to offer this as a general service um to a journal on our own so i think that you know maybe one way of of thinking about is this is, you know, which, um, which corporations are possible? Can there be a multi-step procedure, you know, where the journal um, has, has a workflow step and then the archive has a workflow step? Um, because I think that, you know, we, so for us, for example, at, at the Geysers Data Archive, if we receive um, syntax and, um, or code and, and data, we run the code and we, you know, we, we check that everything runs okay. And we, of course, we also look at the data and the documentation, but I think it's still, this is not the same as replicating um, research results. So we, we check that everything is in order and we check that the documentation is okay and that everything matches. But the, the step of, of really replicating results, I mean, that, that's an extra step. And I think that, you know, um, this is not something that many of us do at the moment. Christina and then Nielsen. Thank you ever so much. Uh, just to add from a UK data service perspective, it's exactly the same as Ilse and Jonas were saying. We do check the documentation, we check the code as we would check regular data, but we don't go into that reproducibility. Is are all the charts they've created the same as in the published article? Because we don't necessarily, and I think you also mentioned that, it's not necessarily our uh, activity to do. And it's also the resource implication because we have tried to do a um, reproducibility pilot and to actually reproduce everything and make sure it's exactly as in the published um, version of the article. It takes a lot of time. So in order to enable something like that, probably there needs to be a separate service 
maybe not funded by the people that want their data to be reproduced, but by funding bodies. And I know, for example, um, in France, there is a reproducibility service called Cascade, um, and they do actually reproduce economic articles, but that is a paid service by the researcher itself. But again, I think the, the main issues here would be is not necessarily part of our core responsibilities and we can check as much as we can but we wouldn't go into that much detail then the second big problem would be the resources problem how and how many people would you need to do that because probably especially with all the journals asking for data to be published or code to be published there is a lot more um a lot more requirements about this to to be done, uh, but again, I'm not sure this sits within archives or sits better with separate services with dedicated resources for it. Yeah, so it really depends how how we define what concerning. Is. Say, I'll give you the floor, but concerning from uh, Kai, uh, we did the same. Um, when they, there are uh, data um, in the preview of social research, then the repository uh, and to check the replication of the data as well. So, Holger. So, yeah, so I have a follow up question. So, um, I directed them to the archives and um, thanks a lot for the uh, perspective it has really got, um, given me better understanding and I think kind of the um, data archives are really good kind of with communicating fair data norms there are things that researchers can read and but I wonder um, Kai Uwe, maybe you can um, reply or Simon from your expect, uh, um, experience with political analysis I think that at least the research communities that I know kind of data sharing norms are way more diffuse. So I think if I worked at a data archive and worked with different social research sub communities, it would be hard in terms of reading um, to um, understand what data sharing norms are and how they can be improved. So there's, I think, a, yeah, a lack from the, re from the researcher's perspective. Do you have a perspective on idea how that can be improved within communities? what their particular types of um, data are. So kind of my experience has been with political parties um, where it's really, it's not well documented um, how it can be ideally linked, um, but I would like to see um, the reviewer's perspective. Kai Uwe has a different perspective. Would you like to, to talk about it? Um, he doesn't seem to agree a lot with the replication. Uh, um, I, I don't think that I can say much more than I just wrote, and I, I do not really have an answer to Holger's question uh, in, in the moment. We are still struggling with that as, as well. Uh, but while I'm talking, um, what I was thinking on a completely uh, different level that I would like to see this discussion continue, uh, especially since I'm, for example, leaving uh, German political science uh, quarterly, but it is a discussion that uh, the editorial board will be interested in for the future also. So if there could be some way of uh, reconvening uh, this crowd of people with these functions on a more regular basis, I think that would be very, very helpful because I learned so much today. I think many other people did too, and it would be good if uh, that can be continued. Thanks. That is an idea of this agenda program for for the next two years at least uh, we, we will be trying we will we already set up a, a website and we set up a mailing list and we hope that yeah that, that is exactly what we hoped for what you just said Simon and then Brian I don't know who raised the hand first so sorry and Jonas Simon yeah, I'm just brief responding to Holger. Um, as far as I know, there is no um, unifying uh, like rule how we how we should treat these data, even for something as specific as political parties. In my experience, it really depends on the journal in question that you're submitting to, which for researchers is obviously a whole like a huge pain because you have to do it five different ways of five different journals, and that would really be something that should, in my opinion, um, really be developed. And I second Kaiubas, it would be great to have some sort of mailing list to continue 
to be in contact because I feel like among us, we can ask, answer so many different questions. It's a great resource. Maybe we should go to Jonas. Uh, I don't think that I raised um, my hand. Jonas. Okay, yeah. thank you. I just, Jonas? Um, yeah, I just one. wanted to, to add one, one topic, which it's sort of one of my, not pet peeves, but I think, you know, thinking about how repositories and archives and, and journals can work together in the, in the replicating and review process. So I think one demand that we often get or one question that we often get is, you know, isn't there a way of, you know, uploading the data to the repository and then sharing it privately with the, with the reviewers, with the data reviewers. And, and this is something, um, you know, where archives could provide a, a framework and, you know, allow for a seamless process of, of review to publication of the data. Um, but at the same time, you know, there are all kinds of questions that we found are very complex to answer. Like, you know, if the, the, the peer review is double blind, you know, how do you, um, anonymize if there are access restrictions with the data and someone has to accept terms of use, you know, how does that um, play with, with the reviewer anonym, anonymity and so on. So this is a field that I find very interesting. I think it's, there is a great demand for such a solution. Um, but yeah, it's also, it's, it's not easy um, to implement, but it, I think it's a, it's an interesting topic to think about. Thank you, Jonas. Ami, would you like to add something? Yes, thank you. Uh, just building on what, what Jonas had just said, I'd, I'd really like to add a, a couple more stars to that particular constellation of, of partnerships in thinking about uh, data, research data, and publication of research data as a whole. As we've talked about before, really developing um, data that is worthwhile to publish starts very early in the research process and, and relying on, on those partners that are available to researchers throughout that process, I think is, is instrumental in getting us to the point of developing replicable data before we get to the conversation of who's actually going to do that type of replication. So I think keeping all of those resources in mind, um, what's available to a researcher at the university level, at their institutional level, what are funders providing in this space, um, particularly in, um, I'm, um, I, I never introduced myself, but I'm out of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, so coming from the US perspective, so thank you for letting me eavesdrop and participate in this conversation. I truly appreciate it. Mostly it's out of jealousy for what the EU, for what SESTA has been able to develop. But you have looking at Europe from the American con from the US context, you have so many great resources available to your institutions in terms of data management and data services. Really working to develop those more fully and bringing them into the conversation as part of that full research life cycle from initiation of the research through publication and replication of those of those resources is is so very important in thinking about that entire environment. Thank you. Thank you, Amin. Uh, okay, I think that uh, is there any other? Yeah, we have Two more, we take two more questions and then we have to wrap up because that will be the end of, uh, so I don't see anybody else. Or so we would like to or thank your you views, maybe um, you, 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 somebody from participants have something to share of their own opinions. In any case, in the chat, there is uh, a good idea. You can uh, consult the CESDA Data Management Expert Guide. And we should not forget that this is a win-win um, game. I mean, everybody will win with that. If we collaborate, then the researchers will, be, will benefit of that. And of course, the universities, I mean, there is the educational world as as well, so we shouldn't forget them because they are a direct audience to all of us. Thank you, Seraphim. Okay, that leaves it to me to um, wrap up and just close a few windows. Um, excellent, so I will only take two more minutes of your time. Um, 
to say first of all that uh, I guess my uh, partners here agree that we have been really surprised by the very positive response and participation and um, the enthusiasm you have showed as well in the chat etc i'm trying to uh, save some of the comments and follow some of the links and uh, to respond though to the demand which is brilliant that uh, we keep in touch and uh, as mariana rightly pointed out this is um going on this will be going on for the next uh, two years or so so we're only halfway through and um, as part of the agenda 21 22 what we have is a dedicated website where we will uh, upload the material from the events as well as the reports that Mariana mentioned in her presentation as soon as they are approved by SESTA. And uh, we have just set up a mailing list and um, what we will do is we will send you all, uh, all the participants, a link to how to subscribe to this mailing list. It is actually a Google a group set up by SESTA so it is very well protected your data will not be disclosed to third parties etc and this is why I'm not uh, kind of making it available here you will receive a personalized invitation and um, the other thing is of course the dedicated website which um, maybe Yevhen could uh, please post oh I can do it here and um, regarding future plans, the next major event will be the end of this project, which is uh, going to be in around a year um, towards uh, mid the second part of 2022. But we have the case studies that were mentioned earlier by Mariana during her presentation. And these case studies are still under development. They're quite open. And what we are considering is maybe having uh, smaller events more dedicated to some of the issues raised here for example there were um, issues about sharing good practice in terms of replicability and replication services and uh, that's one idea we could organize a shorter event where we can exchange the experiences for example or uh, maybe something more theoretical what constitutes data in the social sciences something uh, like a shorter debate and uh, this is something that uh, will not probably happen top down. We will, as soon as you join the mailing list and the, and the group, it is something we will be discussing and, um, and we will see based on the demand what happens next. So I would like to thank, uh, in no particular order, <laughs> my uh, partners um, of the, for the whole um, task uh, group, uh, SESTA of course, for uh, funding the whole thing and our respective um, organizations for supporting us. Uh, the panelists who dedicated their time and, uh, and energy and generating so much uh, discussion and debate. And also everyone who participated and well, everyone who couldn't make it or couldn't make it for so long. In the program, what I also have is another 20 minutes for those of you who want to keep the discussion going, etc., we will not be recording the next 20 minutes. So the, the recording will end now. And um, you are welcome to um, stay around and talk to us and it will be a more, a less formal kind of setting. So thank you. All.